Hello and welcome to part 7 in this video series on Python and Arduino serial communication. In this video we're going to add some extra functionality. We're going to be able to print out multiple rows and do some general code cleanup. Let's start by looking at the output. In the Python shell we print out the row number and its computed average. We also create a data logging file. It's in the comma separated value, the CSV format. It's my preference to create a CSV file because it's very easy to import into programs like Microsoft Excel. Looking back to the output of part six, we see we only printed a single row of data and each data point was separated by a space. In part seven, this video, we're gonna use the new format of comma separated values. Let's look at the code that produces these results. Inside the while true loop, we have a nested for loop. We previously developed a program to print out multiple data points, but we only print out one row. So if we use a for loop and repeat this operation of creating a single row, we just need to iterate through and do it a few times. I created a variable called num rows collect. This is how many rows of data we'll be collecting. We keep num points, which is the number of data points per the row, and that's the inner for loop. To get the individual data points, we call get values and we store it into data. I created a function called print to file. I pass it in the data point and at what point it occurs in our row. To compute the average, we need to convert our data points into numbers. I do this and then I store it into a data list. After we get finished with collecting one row of information, I call the getAverage function. I pass it in the list, which is of size num points, and I pass it the row number. This is the current index of the upper for loop. Once we iterate through the upper for loop, we close the data file and exit the program. Let's dive into the two functions that we just went over. The first is print to file. This accepts the single data point and the current index. We first write the data point to the file. This is data file dot write. To create a nice CSV format, we don't want to print a comma for the last value. This if else statement determines if we're at the last data point or not in a row. And if we are at the last data point in a row, we print a new line. We compare the index, which is at what point we are in that inner for loop to num points minus one. Num points minus one will be the last entry in the row. If the index is not equal to the last entry in that row, we print a comma. Else we print a new line. This will give us multiple rows in the CSV format. To clean up the code, I took the average calculation out of the inner for loop, and I created its own function here, which is called getAverage. I pass it in the list, which is the collection of data points that makes up each single row, and I pass it row. Row is the index of the upper for loop. To compute the average, we simply sum all the elements of the list and then divide by the total number of elements within that list. Then in the Python shell, we print out the top level index, which is the number of the row and its average. Let's take a look at the output, but this time I'm gonna update the two variables that control the size of the list, which is num points and num rows collect, which is how many rows we're going to print out. We are collecting 100 rows of information and taking 20 data points per average. If we want to see the raw output, each individual point, we can look to the text file. Notice the nice and neat formatting, and it contains all the points used to calculate the averages. Here's a comparison between the while true loop used in part six on the left and part seven on the right. On the left, the red indicates that lines have been removed and on the right the green indicates lines that have been added in. This comparison above the while true loop shows that we added in two functions, the print to file and get average. 
we also created a variable called rows num collect. I'll leave you with the last comparison, which are the full files compared to each other. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more content. Be sure to check out the GitHub link in the description to download or view the code for yourself. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this episode.